eight-year-old girl, I'll call her Natalie, has acute lymphoblastic leukemia. At one time, Natalie looked like a typical child. Now her body is frail and bruised, her hair is clumped and falling out, her cheeks are pale, her lips are chapped, and her skin is discolored and so dry it's peeling. Natalie sits motionless in her dark hospital room, half awake and half asleep. Her arms are held in place with tape and tubes, and a twisted blanket covers her legs. Cool air blows from the overhead vents as lights from medical equipment flash, the monitor beeps, the IV drips, and a TV stationed inches from her sweet face blasts sounds of a soap opera into the room. The hospitals do a magnificent job providing medical care. Most of the psychological and emotional support is centered around helping the children to comply with taking their medication and supporting them as they are shuffled in and out of medical procedures. Family education is also something they provide and excel at. Yet we know there's so much more involved in caring for these children, including their perceptions and how they experience their illness. The American Cancer Society states that cancer is the second leading cause of death in children younger than 15 years old after accidents. The American Psychological Association finds that children with cancer often have a negative perception of themselves, which is associated with academic, social, and psychological impairment, low self-esteem, and symptoms of depression. These children are a significant risk for a range of short and long-term social, emotional, and behavioral difficulties. When I enter the room, I don't know how long Natalie has. I don't know if she'll be receptive or too sedated to speak. I don't even know if I'll see her after today. What I do know is that I'm able to meet each child within her individual needs. For instance, getting down at eye level and joining in play, understanding and identifying their feelings, and the language they choose to use in that moment. We as dance movement therapists are trained in techniques that elicit emotional expression and we are trained to read the individual patterns of a child's movements and to facilitate an opening for psychological healing through the mind-body connection. Current research shows that using creative arts therapy reduced anxiety, depression, and pain and increased quality of life. Studies published in the Journal of the American Medical Association state, state significant improvement in the parents' report of their child's hurt, nausea, and mood based on the FACES scale. These children were more excited, happier, and less nervous with the use of creative arts therapy interventions. For Natalie, dance movement therapy truly counts. Once a week, she gets to, you could say, escape from her hospital room. She gets to have control over an uncontrollable life sentence and she gets to be a child. Our interactions may be the only time Natalie gets to express how she feels about her pain and to acknowledge what's to come. I support the patient to not only talk and hear about their emotional experiences, but to embody them for a continued understanding and acceptance. For instance, allowing Natalie to reach into her stomach and actually throw away her discomfort, actually acting it out, allows her to have a sense of this feeling to name it and control it. By providing her an opportunity to move with quickness and expansion, spreading her arms out wide, Natalie feels less tense and less restricted than in her previous slouched over body state. Ultimately, Natalie and other patients like her get to have increased coping skills by having more choices, find more adaptive ways to express their pain and emotional discomfort, as well as to connect to family, friends, and medical staff about their chronic illness. Each clinical interaction is unique, but each begins the same way. When I enter the room, I immediately assess the child's emotional state as viewed in their nonverbal cues. By attuning to their mood and physicality, I welcome them to join me in an exploration to see how our body is moving today. We start by looking at maybe those tiny parts, maybe the tip of the nose that doesn't quite hurt today and then to delve in and tolerate purposely those areas that are more pained and restricted and tense. We contextualize this experience as I might ask Natalie to describe where she feels that pain or sadness in her body. Can she see it as a shape or a color or a temperature? Is this area moving or is it still? We might even put a sound to this feeling. Natalie has full control over this experience. Her thoughts and most importantly, her body. 
Nobody's telling her to lift her arms five times or sit very still for vitals. The experience is uniquely her own. In our dance movement therapy session, I have met Natalie in her half awake, half asleep, withdrawn state in that hospital bed. But by using movement, a language that is innately familiar to all children, I have allowed her to emerge. With her ideas and her direction, we have journeyed into our imagination and we have changed a seemingly unchangeable environment in a place of healing. Natalie communicates that she has a change in her pain, an altering of her emotional state. She now feels joyful and comfortable. And she communicates that she's appreciative that although subtle, she was able to move when earlier she had communicated to staff and families, she was unable to do so. This is just one example of a dance movement therapy session. This modality allows the patients to be themselves, to express what it's like to, to be frustrated about their release date being changed or sad that no one visited them today, or just to communicate about having chronic stomach pain and headaches, or they transition away from those kind of, those kind of feelings and embrace the relief around a successful procedure or a restful nap. Einstein said, not everything that counts can necessarily be counted. Now you too know why this modality, dance therapy, truly counts to Natalie. By hearing her story, I'm hoping that we can encourage hospitals and families to seek more opportunities for children in these fragile states. I am proud to be asked on a weekly basis to be the first person to get a child out of their bed talking and moving and I will continue to advocate for this most countable treatment. Thank you.